This is your one and only FireSpark81 with your daily dose of video goodness and welcome back to another informational Valheim video. Today we're going to talk about the most recent devlog that was posted on 528.21. Let's get to it. All right, so here is how this is going to go. I'm just going to read through this thing and uh, then I have some words to say. May vent a little, may rant a little. It's going to happen. So it says... Time flies and summer is just around the corner here at Iron Gate. We're still working from home and we're still looking for the perfect office. So apparently they don't even have an office yet or they've never had an office. So hopefully they can find the perfect office soon because I'm sure that will help them speed up development a little bit. While those things remain unchanged, exciting things are still happening within the company. The last couple of weeks, we've been having interviews with several potential future co-workers, and we're really excited to grow with more talent. While it may take a couple of weeks before the time comes, we're already looking forward to introducing our new colleagues to you. We have, in a way, already received a new team member say hello to Valheim the Horse. We collaborated with our friends that I'm not even going to try to pronounce that to get them a new horse, technically a pony, for their riding school. Isn't she a beauty? You will definitely see more of her in the future. This does not mean that we will introduce horses into the game, but it does mean that Iron Gate will take a field trip to the stables to meet our four-legged colleague. And then they show a picture of the horse. It is a pretty little pony. Since last time, we, as usual, made some updates and fixes for the game. We, for example, overhauled the harpoon mechanics, added a pre-saving message, and updated the looks of the troll and two bosses. Our work on the hearth and home is still going well. The update is starting to take shape, and the past month has been very productive, with many new items and mechanics being finalized. There are, of course, many more things we want to make before the update is released, as we don't want to rush it. In our last devlog, we explained how we work, wanting to let things take the time they need, and not setting a release date before we know for certain that the game is in a state that we can proudly present. And the response we got was fantastic. We are eternally grateful for having such a kind and understanding community. We are very proud to get to be on this journey with you. In our last updates, we gave you some sneak peeks and this time is no different. We all have a great time reading your theories on what the items could be. Some are more correct than others, but they're all equally creative. This month, we present you with these pictures. What do you think they could be? And then they post these two. Uh, this could literally be anything. I mean, who knows? This is obviously a lattice wall. I mean, pretty obvious. I think so anyway. What do you think? Do you think I'm wrong? you think I'm right? Looks like a lattice wall or possibly, possibly a window. Could be a window. Could be a lattice window. But it's a lattice something because that's that's lattice work right there. This, I have no idea. A seat, uh, pff, who knows? It looks like a butt imprint in a seat. I'm going to say it's a butt imprint in a seat. And then finally, they finish with, we're looking into hosting some Q&A, hopefully in June, where we can answer your questions about the game development and the team. If this is something you'd be interested in, comment below. So I think this is something we'd all be interested in. So make sure you, if you're on Steam, you can hop over there, comment, let them know, uh, hit the thumbs up button, rate it up so that they know we're interested in that because I think finding out more about what's going on behind the scenes is definitely something we're all relatively interested in. Okay, so now let's have a little chat. At this point, if you can't be objective about the games you love and be critical about the games you love, you probably want to click away because I'm probably going to make you angry. So first off, I want to say I, like many people, I'm fine with them taking all the time they need to develop their game and get it just perfect. I have no problem with that. I'm a perfectionist myself and taking time to do things just makes sense to me. You want to do it. You want to do it right. You want to see your vision where it needs to be. The problem is when it comes to game development and games in general, 
People get bored really fast, especially when your game already has relatively limited content in it. And make no mistake that Valheim is currently bleeding players. If you take a look over here at Steam DB, you can see the lifetime of the game here. As we move closer into May, you can see they've dropped significantly in their player count as opposed to what they were months ago. Now, that happens generally in games, even when they have super active game development, people just get bored, they stop playing, and it drops off. But theirs has been dropping a lot, and it continues to drop. If you take a look here at the current week, you can see, you know, they had a couple of spikes, but it's slowly, those spikes are becoming less and less and less and less as people get bored with the game. We are almost into June, and they have not even hit the first update on their roadmap for 2021. At this rate, either these updates are going to be next to nothing or these updates are all going to get pushed further into the future and they need to update their roadmap and let everybody know that this stuff is not going to happen in 2021. Because as it stands right now, we're all expecting by the end of the year to have all of these, including the Mistlands, which is currently just an empty biome. They made the comment in this post that they're hiring people. Hiring people takes time. You, you need to find somebody that's gonna work well with your team. You need to find people in specific fields that you need them in. So you can't, I mean, you can't just hire a coder when you need somebody to do graphics. So you have to find somebody specific to do graphics. I don't think a lot of people realize how broken down each individual thing is when it comes to game development a majority of the time. Now you do have those outlying cases where you have that single person doing all of the things for their one game, but generally in game development, most of the time you have a person doing your 3D stuff, then you have a person doing the, your interface, then you have a person doing the coding in the background. You have people separated for each individual task. Hiring those people can take some time. That's completely understandable. What I don't get is they're looking for the perfect, just find an office, just find, they have made a stupid amount of money, an absolutely stupid amount of money. It should not take time to find a spot to set up shop and hop in there. I imagine working from home is one of the things that's slowing down their development more. Not just not having people to help speed up development, but working from home as we've seen during this whole pandemic situation, it's slowed down a lot of companies. It's a lot slower to work from home and coordinate with other people than it is to work from an office, mainly because you're all there on the same network and things can be transferred, moved around a lot faster, and it's a lot faster to work on a solitary network than and trying to send files over the internet. So the fact that they haven't even gotten into an office yet and they're, they're dragging their feet looking for the, and I'm making air quotes, perfect office is just silly to me. Like just pick an office. And as I stated before, I don't have a problem with them taking a while to develop their game and getting everything just right. That's perfectly fine. But holding out on content for one large patch and then holding out and holding out and holding out and holding out for another large patch just keeps people away from your game longer till it gets to the point where they forget about your game altogether. More frequent updates keeps people coming back more often and reminds people that your game is there. Another way that they could keep their player base is having mod support. There are, is an absolutely massive community for modding for this game and none of it's official and I've been looking into it and it's all an absolute pain in the butt. You need all these different programs to patch your game and all this crazy shenanigans when if they just had official mod support, I guarantee you they would have lost a fraction of the players that they've lost already because people would be entertained and they would be making their own content for the game. A lot of people are just leaving because they're bored with the game. There's nothing to do and they don't want to deal with the BS that comes with trying to mod the game. Let's talk about this horse now. So this horse, they say it doesn't mean that they'll introduce horses into the game. I think that may mean that they don't want to commit or maybe they just wanted to buy a pony. I don't know. But if you're going to add something into a game animal wise and you want to do it right, you most of the time study the animal that you're adding into the game so you can get the movements and behaviors down. 
for your animations properly. This is a common thing that's done uh, all the time, even for movies, 3D movies, when they're doing animals, they'll study the animals. And same thing with video games. So if you're gonna add a horse, you study a horse so you can make sure you get those movements and behaviors down properly. This could mean that they're thinking about adding horses. I know this is a, a huge feature that people want in the game. People want mounts. I'm with you. I want mounts. Mounts should be a thing. Vikings actually had and kept a lot of animals and they were really good farmers. And so, yeah, horses would be a now granted they didn't take horses on the boats, but they had horses in their homesteads. Anyway, uh, I'm not going to get into Viking talk, but this could mean we're getting horses in the future and they just don't want to commit to it. I hope that's what that means. And it just doesn't mean that they're wasting their money on horses because they're going to need that money for development. Uh, we've seen games in the past that have hit really good and made a ton of money and then still ran out of money relatively quickly because paying people is expensive when you don't have money continuously coming in. That money that you made runs out really fast. So hopefully they've made proper investments and hopefully they are managing their money properly and that they don't end up having to fire these people that they're looking to hire a year from now. But the bottom line is they are going to keep bleeding players with the current way they are doing things. They have made it very clear that that roadmap they released should be taken with a grain of salt, that they are going to release things when they feel like releasing things and it they don't care if they bleed players until then. I really, really think that they should focus on making mods an official part of the game so that people can continue to entertain themselves and make their own content. Also, there are a ton of really great mods out there that I really wish were a lot easier to add to the game and that I didn't have to do a bunch of random shenanigans and download untrusting programs and all this other stuff in order to patch my game to play with said mods. And I'm sure there's a lot of other people out there like that. I made a community post the other day and about Valheim and something that I keep seeing not only in that community post a lot, but also in the comments of my Valheim videos is the epic loot mod. I looked into this mod. It's not nearly as easy to add into the game as something like Valheim Plus. You need a third party program to patch it into the game. And it just, it gets a little chaotic when you have to start having all these other things in order to mod your game. Just a simple mod like that or a mod like Valheim Plus, if I could just click or any of us could just click a button that says subscribe and add it to the game quickly and easily would be absolutely fantastic and add hours and hours of more gameplay time into the game and really help this game a lot. Unfortunately, though, they don't seem to care that they are losing tons of players, and I don't know if this is going to help them in the long run, if it will be able to bounce back, or if it's something that's just going to cause this game to end up being forgotten in the long run. Let me know what you think down there in the comments section. I'm eager to hear your all's thoughts. That is going to wrap it up for this episode. If you like what you saw, consider hitting that sub button. I want to give a massive thank you to my supporters on Patreon for making this episode possible. Y'all are absolutely amazing people. If you would like to join my elite crew Patreon supporters, please check out the link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and share your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.